Today is one of those special days where we are not doing a Blender tutorial, and the reason for that is Liquid Gen is out, Liquid Gen Alpha. If you don't know what that is, uh, neither do most people, so you're in good company. So uh, you remember EmberGen, that like software GPU accelerated that makes explosions, fire, smoke somehow in real time? Well, same company called Jenga FX, like the game Jenga, uh, maybe spelled differently, maybe not. Um, has released a closed alpha for LiquidGen, a liquid version of the same program. It's closed in the sense that you can only access it if one, uh, you have the um, the Indie Suite, which is a bit more expensive than the uh, EmberGen. Uh, but once you have that, if you join their uh, Discord server, which is where they are releasing it. It's very strange that everybody operates on Discord now, like Midjourney. So uh, you will get access to this channel. And I'm thinking, Let's do first impressions and let's start it. Let's see what this is all about. I assume it's very similar to Embergen, some kind of like node based thing. And ba ba ba, they're saying it's not done. Okay, great. And, and they're making me wait. It seems like they're only giving me 14 days for Liquid Gen. I don't know what that's about, but either way, uh, let's start a new project and see. So if I play, Okay, there we go. It's looking a little wonky for a second there, but it seems like it is working. And let's see if we can like move stuff dynamically. Yep, okay. It seems a little slower than Embergen, to be honest, but that's still pretty impressive for a liquid simulation. So I wonder if we can like downsample uh, in the same way as usual. So if I take the voxel size, bring it up, what I expect is the bigger the voxel size, yeah, the faster the simulation. That's really nice. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing is that there's this new sphere object, which I don't think represents the domain, but more so represents where the, um, I don't I don't think it's called outflow, it's where the um, simulation kind of stops, like it drains it outward. So if I do this, it will uh, only simulate to the right and to the left. Okay, I'm liking what I'm seeing. That's pretty impressive. Okay, so uh, let's play with some stuff. I'm gonna change the primitive from a cube to let's say we are going to emit from a cylinder. Increase the height, increase the radius, and okay, so that seems to have been what is up. So, uh, okay, clearly it works, but the main thing I'm interested in is what do we have control over specifically? Uh, do we have control over viscosity? That's what matters the most. So. Uh, in simulation, what do we have access to? We have like normal settings. I assume stickiness is is the same thing as um, what I was just saying. Yeah, now it's looking like honey. What was the word? It wasn't vorticity. It was called um, not adhesion either. I, I literally just said it. Viscosity. There we go. Okay, so that's actually great news because those are the more interesting simulations in my mind, kind of like these honey uh, type of simulations. Okay, so can I get kind of like a nice glazing? It still kind of looks like goop, <laughs> uh, but I think that is a function of me not picking correct settings. Okay, what else can we play with? So stickiness, that's great. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so it seems like the way this works under the hood is it first of all just runs kind of like a particle simulation and then it skins it, it turns it into a mesh, uh, which is kind of like this uh, second parameter. So I'm not gonna play with that yet. Do these have uh, hints? Okay, how much the density affects the divergence? Higher values should enforce incompressibility. So if I lower this, it's almost like this liquid can intersect itself which uh, should give kind of different looking results. Okay, so we got our honey. Uh, let's make this more interesting. So for our emitter, um, okay, we have our volume flow rate. So now we got, you know, the Nickelodeon slime festival. Uh, let's bring that down significantly. So we're not creating as much. It is time for you to take your skills to the next level with 
Skillshare. Skillshare is a place where there are a bunch of learning paths, which you can think of as basically a sequence or a curated handpicked list that basically takes you from like beginning to end, from like beginner to advanced in a certain topic. Specifically, one that I am interested in is this kind of like graphic design learning path. And you can see that the third one in this list is one that I've actually seen. It's the digital poster design, combining images and type for powerful visuals. This is kind of like an interesting use case where you take these posters and you get this like super stylized feel has a, a certain theme you can watch it uh, but this is an element in this kind of graphic design learning path i always support you know learning stuff online so check out skillshare and there will be a link in the description where the first 500 people it's a lot of people but you know you gotta act fast uh, the first 500 people to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial so you could just watch those now immediately. So back to the tutorial. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring. Okay, so here you can see what's probably happening under the hood. It's basically simulating a lot of particles that then get meshed, probably using one of these Delaunay triangulation algorithms. Okay, love to see it. Uh, what else do we have control over? So uh, what about the drain? So drain seems pretty boring. Okay, great. Uh, let's play with some uh, forces. So for the force, by the way, I'm just right clicking. It seems very similar to uh, Embergen. Uh, let's see, what kind of forces do we have? Turbulence, turbulence. So I'm going to apply this here. And what I'm hoping is this is going to add some like randomness to our simulation, especially if I increase the amplitude. Yeah, now it's looking more bubbly. Uh, bring down the frequency to make that like lower, um, kind of like more uh, not as bumpy detail. Okay, yeah, uh, I would not recommend using this. That looks pretty lame. Okay, what else do we got? We got force, we got drag, which I imagine will make it kind of like slower, like it's fighting the air. So let's just retry that. A little hard to tell. Let me bring up the power. What I'm curious about is can we get a material that kind of looks like honey? One thing that I just found that is interesting is in this uh, render, we have access to path tracing. So this is without, it's kind of what we've been doing. But then with path tracing, I guess this is where we get our watery looking things. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is it seems like, it still seems like it's real time, but in some sense, it seems actually slower. Is that the case? Yeah, it's definitely playing back slower, which I guess makes sense. Um, what else can we control here? I guess we can basically just kind of control like render settings in some sense. So uh, clearly it's trying to do a fast pass at a ray tracing or path tracing. Uh, and then it's running a very strong denoiser. But uh, I would imagine when we're getting to the export and we'll try rendering this in a second, uh, we can get more control. Again, I really want to know, can I get control of the material settings. So kind of the irony here is it seems like all this time it actually was accessible, but I just had to scroll down a little. So um, I don't want you to do path tracing anymore. Let's operate faster. Um, in this appearance node, this seems to be where we're gonna make it look like honey. So for the albedo, I'm gonna choose kind of like a yellowish color. Uh, yeah, yeah, reflective, whatever. Uh, this is also going to be kind of like a golden orange. And I guess to kind of see what this looks like in practice, let's run Path Tracer. Okay, so now we're getting closer to honey. It still looks way too liquidy. So let's see. Transmission strength. Clearly that's not the one. Index of refraction. It seems like these are pretty standard settings. It would be kind of the same settings I'd be used to in a blender. So it seems like the roughness is gonna make it less like heavily reflective. Turns out we can have a metallic material. And can I just increase the brightness? Okay, okay, now we're getting closer to honey. So let's just kind of try to pick nice values, okay? And I think it's probably about time to try to run a kind of like a render here. So it seems like uh, when you're not ready to render, uh, disable path tracing. It'd be nice, and maybe there is, a, a hot key for this, uh, just so I don't need to like enable and disable. 
So I'm thinking let's make kind of like this uh, honey simulation where uh, we can just kind of increase or optimize our settings. So for the emitter, I want there to be way less fluid uh, so that it's kind of like a more constant stream and we're trying to make this look less like uh, goop. So for the emitter, which I guess right now is a cylinder, I'm gonna turn that into a sphere. That sphere is gonna be smaller. I'm hoping that this is gonna make a more pleasant looking stream. Actually, ew. <laughs> um, let's see what else we can do. I know I'm just playing back and forth with these, but that is kind of the point, isn't it? So I think the main limiting thing that's making me feel like it's not honey is it seems like it's falling quite quickly. It should be really viscous even as it's coming down, but I guess it is subject uh, to the same force of gravity. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so this is the force that represents gravity. I know this because it's zero, zero, negative 9.8. If you take in physics, this means gravity, go downwards. So if I was, can I just write divide by two? I can. Uh, this will make it slower. Again, is it physically accurate? No, uh, but I like the way it looks. Okay. Oh, by the way, step rate seems to be quite important. This isn't just kind of like the FPS of how it's simulating, uh, but it actually kind of changes the behavior. So if I was to bring this to 15, right, it doesn't just make it four times slower, but now it's kind of like behaving differently than if I made this 120. But I believe the higher this number is, the less kind of like effect we get. But this kind of looks more like honey, honestly. Uh, the more IP I see, the less viscosity, but the more unstable the fluid. No, 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 no. Bring that down. Bring that down. That's the exact opposite of what I want. Yes. Yes, this seems to be it. So this seems to be more of the way to get honey kind of style simulations, or maybe you're kind of pouring uh, chocolate over something. And it seems like, again, there's kind of two passes of this. There is, first of all, there's first of all the uh, particle pass that is then triangulated, right? Uh, so, you know, if I'm happy with my simulation, but I don't like the meshing, right? It seems like I can just change this after the fact, which is kind of cool because it's kind of two separate operations. So I'm gonna maximize the smoothing. This is because honey is kind of like this goopy, not really, you know, uh, bumpy looking thing. Generate SDF on smoothing. Interesting. Uh, by the way, SDF means sine distance function, I believe, which tells you the distance from the surface. I don't really care about that. Uh, what is ISO value? The surface of the liquid. Okay. So ISO value is basically saying how close are we skinning it to the point cloud. So the smaller it is, it should start breaking. Yeah. So you can see what's going on over here. So let's disable points. So you can see how it kind of gets weird. I would probably increase this quite a bit. Uh, to get more of the uh, honey looking look again. Hopefully there is a, a hotkey, is there? I do not know if there's a hotkey. But this is our secret uh, for making it look like honey. So what else can I change? It's still looking a little weird. Make it brighter, make it more golden. Okay, there we go. That seems to actually be the one. We'll figure it out. Now, by the way, if we get to the point where we can export this, I guess not as a VDB sequence, but maybe as an Alembic or something like that, um, then maybe we could just kind of do our materials in something like Blender, and then this wouldn't uh, matter anyhow. Oh, we can export a mesh. That's actually quite interesting. So we'll try that in a second. I'm going to save my file. Okay, so there actually, let's actually check some of these out. Um, Orange goo waterfall, because it seems like there are much more, you know, there, there's more you can do than just honey, but it is cool, I guess, to see projectile bubble. That did not open. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is where it becomes a uh, closed alpha, okay? Uh, it seems like, of course, the higher resolution uh, the simulation is, the more, you know, fucked you're going to get. Uh, let us kind of finish up the simulation. So instead of a torus, uh, let's say that we're kind of, I don't know, we're kind of glazing honey on like a chocolate bar or something. So I'm going to do a capsule. I'm going to make that a bigger capsule with more height and then just rotate it. 
So it's on its side. Again, making this bigger and wider. So to actually keyframe the position, I believe all we need to do is we need to keyframe the position. And then I wonder if it actually writes dynamically. I don't think it does. So I think we, we need to explicitly write keyframe. So uh, for the position, let's say right here, we add a keyframe. And I guess we do this to all of these. We go some frames down. Now it goes sideways, adds another keyframe. So it's gonna kind of look like that. And then it will, I'm sure there is a way to do this better. And it probably is similar to how you do it in Embergen. I would say comment below, but I have comments disabled. So let's see what this looks like. Honey, honey, honey. <laughs> let's try just doing a render. So. I'm going to render this as a sequence, not a flipbook, but a sequence, which is going to give us, you know, a bunch of images in a row instead of putting them all on one sprite sheet. I'll render this at 512 by 512. Um, and let's say that we do it for 300 frames, uh, which goes from, okay, clearly we need more frames. So here you can see the kind of the length of the uh, project over here. Uh, so I'm just going to make a folder. I'm gonna call it liquid render. And then finally, let's just make sure we have path tracing on. Fine, I'm just gonna pick our directional light and bring up the intensity. Okay, <laughs> looking looking weird, but then that, that's fine. Um, if anything, it kind of represents our honey kind of colors going on. Finally for our actual export, right? So now we're just rendering. I don't care how long this takes. Uh, I'm going to now kind of decrease the uh, voxel size as kind of like a, kind of like a, a final kind of bump in uh, resolution. Okay, let's try it. So export image and I don't know what else to, there is to do. Export, oh, by the way, we're getting a black background. Why, why, why? I, oh, here we go. So there's a difference between render viewport and render all. So that means I can just pick render viewport in theory. Okay, export now. Okay, great. So is it seven minutes? Yes. But is that still impressive for a liquid simulation? By the way, uh, normally the way you see a liquid simulation is as like maybe a multi-hour simulation that then you have to tweak and say, oh, that wasn't right. Now I got to render or simulate again and simulate again and rendering, um, I guess kind of depends on your scene. So I'm going to let this run for a minute and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. And then of course, we'll also um, try to export this as a Alembic or whatever and bring it into Blender. Okay, so this is still rendering and I'm getting impatient again, faster than a normal thing, but with progress comes new versions of uh, impatience. I wanna see what this image sequence looks like at speed. So uh, I'm using Blender as my <laughs> video editor of choice. So video editing, add image sequence, I wonder if it kind of comes in at 120 FPS, which is fine, but let's find out. Okay, so clearly it's playing slowly. What if I made it 120? Okay, that's faster. Or I can make it 30 FPS, go to, is there some kind of like speed setting? Okay, apparently there's a set speed command. So 100 is normal, so let's try 400. And that would hopefully play at you know, what we consider real time. Okay, not bad. It's very noisy, but that's kind of a result of the uh, render settings that I picked. But overall, not bad. Clearly it works. Okay, so now the question is, that looks, you know, it looks fine. Doesn't look great. Uh, can I bring this into Blender uh, to do my own render? Let's find out. So. Uh, here, I have an export mesh node, and here we have the mesh. It seems like we can also, if we wanted to, uh, export the particles and use them for a different purpose, maybe running them through a geo nodes or something. Uh, but I'm gonna export mesh inside of LiquidGen. Well, not inside of LiquidGen, inside my directory that takes forever to load. I gotta figure out what that's about. 
Uh, inside my liquid render, I'm going to add a mesh folder. Okay, so it turns out maybe what we want is a Alembic. Do I enable is sequence set to true if cache is split into separate files? No. Import Alembic. And where is our Alembic? Is it tiny? Enable sequence. Okay, so you have to enable sequence. Great. So now, okay, cool. Uh, so it seems to be playing at 120 frames per second, uh, which is not what we want. So let's see if we can modify that. So it seems like you might want to export at your frame rate in some sense. I don't know if that's an option, uh, but we can probably kind of trick this thing. So we can overwrite the frame. This lets us actually just pick where we are. And then could I, so if I write hash frame, which gives us the frame number, it's going to give us the exactly same issue. But now that we're at 130 frames per second, to get from 120 to 30, you divide by four. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm saying we're going to view this four times slower. So, you know, you could export at the right settings, but this seems fine to me. Now, one thing that's interesting to me is does this kind of preserve things like uh, motion blur? Okay, so EV motion blur, by the way, acts different than, um, than uh, Cycles motion blur, where it basically just takes all the frames and just kind of blends them together. So maybe, I mean, clearly this is an option, but maybe, you know, it's kind of a cheat. Uh, I want to see if this actually works in Cycles to inherit motion blur, which I don't think is a liquid gen issue. I think it's a kind of a result of a Lembic. And maybe there is a way around it yeah, so if you could export certain attributes like the velocity attribute, uh, which may or may not exist, it seems like it does exist, exist, then maybe we could kind of do it in compositing. Let's find out. So I'm going to give this a material. The reason for this is I want to access the attributes. And I wonder if I go into GeoNodes, it might tell me the situation here. So here we have our points. It seems to only inherit the position. So maybe it doesn't actually have a velocities attribute. Well, let's find out. I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste it, and okay, that is empty. And I believe at the moment, we do, yeah, we do not have options to export uh, certain passes. So I would love, of course, um, to have a velocity pass since it seems like a lot of this stuff kind of depends on it. But we do seem to have things like normal passes okay that's good maybe i'll bump it up to 12 get the cleanest motion blur okay so th there is a version of this that works uh hopefully the idea of rendering inside cycles instead of inside liquid gen is we get certain controls like modifying the material increase transmission okay we're getting somewhere um i believe the roughness okay so that seems to matter one thing i'm noticing is we're kind of getting strange shading. But if I bring this up just a little, that seems to hide whatever is wrong. And that, that actually looks much cooler. You can see the honey distorting it. Uh, if you wanted to, it would kind of be a bit of a cheat. I don't know if it would look good, but we can map a three-dimensional noise texture, which you can see works based on generated coordinates. I wonder, could Liquid Gen make advected UVs I'm asking for advected UVs if uh, JangoFX is listening. That would be huge. What that means is we could actually have a noise texture that maps to the fluid as it flows instead of kind of like, you'll see this. Um, it kind of just exists. You can kind of get away with it, but I'm asking for advected UVs. That's a uh, thing that you could actually create with Houdini. So. Here is an additional normal map I'm making. Yeah, so that that's just gonna add some visual interest. So this is without, this is with, say what you will. Or can we import? Have I spoken too soon? No, we, we can import. Okay, so it seems like you can take like a Suzanne and then import it and then run it through as a geometry that I guess you can use as an emitter. Okay, so that, that works. Maybe I'll do something with that. But this is basically my first impression of using it blind. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to get the thing, you know, get it. Uh, okay, cool.